Hello everyone, I'm out here on the patio today, on the covered patio right at the moment. I decided that I'm going to go ahead and work on that north edge of the brick patio. That edge looks awful and it's quite honestly the only thing that I can see no matter how much beauty I put into the landscape or the flowers or anything. The only thing I really notice is the fact that that edge strip looks so horrendous. So I need to get that fixed because it's just a matter of a little bit of time and a little bit of effort, but um, I've been working on other things and just hadn't gotten to it yet. So today's the day. So I think I'll go ahead and water me some flowers and get that taken care of and then enjoy this fabulous weather because it's so amazing and there's a nice breeze so it won't feel quite so hot. But next door had a little tent that he made out of a sheet on the clothesline I just thought that was so adorable oh those little varmints pulled out my flowers look what they did literally pulled out all my flowers and just kind of laid them down the squirrels there's probably hiding a walnut or something goofy guys I need to train them to stop doing that I can hear the baby wrens. They're over there in that house. But if I get very close, it ain't gonna be good. So before I get started on my edge strip project, I guess I better repair this pot once again since the critters keep pulling out my flowers. Ugh. Well, I had more than enough impatience in this pot, but because the critters have been jostling them around. There's a good chance that there's a couple of them that's not going to survive. So I'm going to just go ahead and plant a couple more and hopes that they all survive and somehow it comes out okay. It'll probably be the best pot I've got. I don't know how that's going to do. It's looking pretty puny right now. It's not looking very happy. But it might surprise me. Might just come out of it after all and I'll cross my fingers. From a distance it actually looks like it's fine. It's when I come out to water it and then I go, ah, goofy squirrels. So now I'm gonna go ahead and work on this edge strip. It holds all the bricks into place. With the freeze thaw it kind of shoves it up out of the way and um, usually it's a little while in between having to do this. Um, I can't think of when the last time was that I did this side, but it's pretty bad this year, so I'll give you a sneak peek here. You can see how that little plastic strip has kind of shoved up out of the rock, and it's supposed to help hold those bricks in a nice straight line, and it does. It does a great job, but not right now. So I'm going to go ahead and set this up and get to work. It's a little bit warm. I kind of wanted to do it in the shade. So I might start down here at the northwest corner of it and work my way this direction because as the sun comes around, then this entire area will be shaded. I was going to do it last night, but by the time we got done grilling out, it was a little bit late and I just didn't want to do it. I probably would have run out of daylight anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and do it now. Wish me luck. So basically the easiest way that I have found to do this, as far as what works for me, is how I sit on my monopod. This thing is pretty nice because it can swivel around and lean and it's adjustable for height, but it works well for me. I take a really good trowel, because if you buy one of the cheapos, don't waste your money on a cheapo. You'll be replacing it anyhow and you'll hate it. Get a good 
one. This one's got a serrated edge. So when I'm planting the flowers, I can actually cut the root system. It works amazing. But I just take this and kind of move the rock back. And then I try to get rid of all of the mud and debris that's fallen in there over time. Put the edge strip back on uh, a little bit deeper than the top of the bark because once again, freeze thaw is going to work its way up eventually. So we don't want it to do that. We just want it to hold the pots in, or hold the bricks in place. So might as well get started. there it's really buried. Up here it's all the way out. All the way. Let's see if I can get this corrected. Halfway easy. Across my fingers. something stuck down there so I'm gonna go out and get that all right so now basically what I have to do is take this edge strip and it's got a lot of mud sand a little bit of clay but see all that that's kind of piled up on there that obviously wasn't there when I put this uh, against the bricks it would have just been the gravel that was on top of it but over time all the dirt and everything falls in there and that doesn't help things out at all so generally what i do is take a big bucket and i will take the trowel scrape off all that mud and then try to level up the mud where this edge strip is going to go and make sure that you got a nice even edge against the brick so that this can go in and i probably am going to sink it down maybe about a half inch from the top and that way it gives it a little bit of time for it to work its way back up because it's going to it's inevitable um, but at least that gives me a little bit of room buys me some time if I put it down too low it's not gonna do anything if I put it up too high it's gonna drive me crazy probably by the end of this year so I want to make sure that it's down there but I don't have to redo this for two or three years and cross my fingers so once again crossing fingers so I'm gonna grab a bucket and start pulling out some of this mud and see if I can make this thing look way better than it does. I always keep buckets. Buckets are super important to have if you're into landscaping at all. Just a few empty buckets that I use on a pretty much a daily basis. But that's going to be kind of my lifeline here for trying to repair this because I can get rid of the junk dirt that I need to eliminate. I probably need to pull this up a little bit or else I'm not going to be able to get this cleaned out real well. All right, so now what we've done, I've got one of the edge strips off. There's gonna be two. Uh, this is 16 by 20, so we've got two eight foot strips here that hold the bricks into place. And what I've actually done is gotten all the dirt, the sand, the excess rock out of there. And I'll show you how much I took out. I actually got a full bucket of dirt and debris out of this. I mean, that bucket is full, goodness. And then over here, where I've got this, oh, I've got some of it falling back in, dog on it. Oh, that's not good. Let me see if I can lift that up, get that back where it belongs. Get back where you belong. So anyhow, dug that out a little bit. Give me a pretty good trench through there. And that way then when I slip that in, then it's got a place to go. All right, Joe got me a new toy. I got an external mic 
because if anybody has ever used a GoPro, you know that the microphone system kind of sucks. Kind of goes in and out a little bit. Depends on what the circumstances are, but it almost sounds like you're walking in circles around the GoPro sometimes. So anyhow, uh, he bought me an external mic and I'm test driving that right now and it is specially designed for GoPro. Yes, it is. It's uh, an Editage E. M or ETM001. It's kind of one of the hot things in external mics right now for the GoPro Hero 7 Black and the 8 even. Uh, and we don't have all the vlog case yet. So hot. Yeah, it is hot. Uh, we don't have the vlog case yet. It should be here in a day or two and then uh, it will look like a real assembly and you won't have pieces hanging. But at any rate, it's worth a try out here in the wind. I got pieces hanging. Yeah. But it's got a little tiny microphone. That thing is small. I'm going to hold it in front of the camera and see if you can see it. There it is. Of course, it's going to look massive there, but it's pretty small. And then it's got a little foam cover so that it helps with the wind noise. But uh, I do have a dead cat on order that is the fuzzy thing that you put on the microphone so that it helps hold down on the wind noise. And I also have... Uh, something that is going to be like the external that will be attached to my shirt. So like when we're on rides and stuff like that, Gary's so soft-spoken, he's probably the one who needs to wear it. <laughs> because he's so hard to hear on the videos. He is hard to hear. I have a loud mouth so everybody can hear me. I've just got, I don't know, I exert my voice, I guess. But anyway, so I'm going to try this out and see if it works. So now I'm trying out the new microphone system. So half of this video might sound amazing and the other half not so much. We'll cross our fingers that it sounds amazing no matter what. But with any luck at all, at least future videos will sound better. We've had a lot of issues with the microphone on the camera. Not really problems, it's just the quality of the sound and with Gary being so soft-spoken, he's impossible to hear anyway. He's impossible to hear if you're not on a camera. He's just very soft-spoken. Soft-spoken is not in my DNA. Ask any of my family. They'll shout it to you. <laughs> Ain't that right, Joe? Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. 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 Mm-h
And they're just fabric pins is all. Get them at Lowe's. I don't remember how much, what, $10, $15 a pack, something like that. I don't know. But don't put down fabric without these. They are definitely the answer. It keeps everything in place so you don't have stuff slipping around. Let's see where I'm at here. So I'm putting a lot of them in, probably way more than I need to, but because I'm on the edge, I want to make sure that it's not going to go anywhere. Secure it really good. take that little bit of extra time, a little bit of extra effort, and a little bit of extra money and do it right. You want to be proud of it for years. You don't want to have to redo it. But the ones where it's literally they can see everything as soon as they step, you don't want it to do that. You want it to look fabulous and be proud of it. So like this, since it's something down just a tiny bit. I am going to add rock, even though I've got a pretty good layer there. I'm still going to add a little bit. Yeah, I can use like a, a half a bucket up there by the grill. Yeah, I've noticed that that has kind of settled away, and uh, that was definitely one of the places that I want to fill in with some of the extra. So we'll go to the nursery, you know, maybe even sometime this week, get a little bit of extra trap rock. Not tons of it. Uh, just a little bit, just a few buckets to kind of fill in, because this is going to have some low spots. I've just had a lot of dirt, so it's definitely going to have some low spots to it. So I got it done. I'm going to definitely add a few buckets of the trap rock. It's a little bit sunken, not bad, but enough that I notice it. Plus I've got some low spots where I need to fill in because it does drive me crazy. If you can see landscape fabric, it's definitely not a good thing. But it actually turned out really good. I sunk that edge strip down quite a bit, took out a lot of mud and sand and gravel and stuff that was down in there. But when I refilled it in, you can see that I can definitely use a little bit more trap rock down there. 
but you don't see any plastic edge anymore. It's down there quite a ways. So all in all, this project looks amazing. And I leveled up that last brick on the corner there. Had sunk just a little bit, just enough where it was noticeable. And so I went ahead and straightened that around too. But obviously I can add a little bit more rock here. It can use it. Not a whole lot, but it definitely needs some. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Very, very happy with it. And I've tried to decide if I want to redo this sidewalk. This sidewalk I probably did 25 years ago, maybe. The reason why we did these sidewalks was because we had a need for a 400 pound wheelchair to be able to go through here. It's in um, one of the automatic wheelchairs and we needed that. So we needed something that was fairly stable and we didn't even have a patio at the time but we just needed something that was fairly stable. That has definitely served the purpose for a lot of years. But now that the patio is in place and it looks so amazing, I'd like to take that out and maybe instead of these wooden edges that's on here, maybe take that out all together and go just a little bit wider uh, so that it's actually up to the hot tub. I think that would look spectacular. Take out that board there that's right beside the hot tub, take that out and put the brick there. So, but do the herringbone pattern where it has the rug edge, like what the patio does. And that would dress it up considerably from where it is right now. You can tell it's got a lot of years, a lot of wear on it, but it's the same exact brick that we did the patio with. And I've got a bunch more of that brick out by my pear tree. And I've been thinking about putting the large, uh, they're called Wisconsin boulders. And that's what I have around all the landscape. But I didn't have it finished over here in this one area. Uh, right over in here, I need to put the Wisconsin boulders over in that area. And then I thought about where it ends over here, it goes up to the lot line. Uh, it's a little bit of a hassle for mowing. So I was thinking about kind of straightening it out to go around where the pear tree is and putting in the Wisconsin boulders there. And then I can relocate those bricks to use as part of the sidewalk that comes out from the covered patio to the main patio and it'll all just kind of flow together. But this area over here has always been a real hassle to mow where it comes in here and of course it's got mixed match edgers, things like that, it just looks like crap. And everything else looks so spectacular, it's time for me to fix that. So I'm thinking possibly stopping here and instead of it going clear in here, having it actually go over here. So it cuts that off. I had a spider on me. Cuts it off right here and then cuts it off there and goes over underneath the pear tree. And I think that that would probably dress it up a lot. That sounds like another project. <laughs> I don't know if I'm ready for another project. Time will tell. I don't know. <laughs> I'm always finding new projects for myself, but not necessarily a great thing. So I think right now, uh, it's time to kick back on the patio with Mr. Gary and enjoy some beautiful evening because man, it's gorgeous. It's just gorgeous tonight. We drank alcohol, we probably had a couple beers, but we don't have that. We don't drink it anyway. <laughs> no, but that's all right. Yeah. We could have a couple iced teas or water or whatever. Joe's coming out with Zsa Zsa. You're good. Mm -hmm. Bringing the baby out, Rudy. We call her Zsa Zsa Shitter Rudy. She's a cutie. Dog. And I'm going to call that a wrap. Good job tonight. Thanks. I worked hard. It's not a hard job, but you feel it in your muscles later. You're like, oh, yeah. God.
You have to lean over. Yeah, you're going to have some pain. I'll feel it Especially tomorrow. Especially muscles that you haven't done for a while. I'll feel it tomorrow, but I'm really happy that I did it. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Okay.